Thank you for tuning in. It's Monday and that means it's time for Errand Update. Today I'm starting off as usual by going over what you can expect in the various errand shows coming up this week. And then I'll reveal the winner of the electric file uh, from two weeks ago. After that I'm gonna talk about my current puppy progress on the big Shadow War project leading up to a narrative campaign. And finally, of course, I want to talk about 8th edition. Not the pre-order, but my plans for it and hopefully get some feedback from you guys because I am at a loss. So, this Wednesday on Aaron Painting, I'm gonna put some paint on two of these. Some of the techniques used, especially on the parts down here, will be the same as we saw in the Promethean Pipelines. But the reactors themselves, I want to do something else. I think the box art uh, shows them off way too clean and with way too much OSL effect to actually look good. So I want to do them uh, more weathered and yeah, in an alternate paint scheme. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. Friday, I want to make some silos out of food cans. And that is a classic scratch build scenery project, but I figured that we can't really have a series of scratch build project without some classics in it too. So yeah, silos for uh, my Shadow War Armageddon table made from food cans, that's Friday. And Saturday is Night Errand and to be honest, I have not decided yet. I still have an, uh, an episode with Robin. We're talking about Shadow War Armageddon and it's a, it's a great episode. But on the other hand, I would like to capture somebody and hear what they have to say about what we know now in 8th edition and the different armies. So if I can get my hands on a Wargamer who, uh, who is hyped about 8th edition and put some cocktails in them, I'll put up an episode like that. And if not, then uh, we have a great episode with Robin talking about Shadow War Armageddon. So that will be uh, Saturday, Saturday night. And that's the week on Aaron Painting, so uh, I'm looking forward to it and hope you do too. And with that, it's time for the Electric File Giveaway. I really like putting the words I hate mold lines into some context, so uh, definitely gonna do that again with the giveaway. I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, but I've chosen the winner randomly and not based on funny context. And the winner is... Da -da 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 -da! Charles Fox. So Charles, I'll send this little back to you. So all I need is your uh, shipping information. You can message me on the Facebook page with that and I'll send it straight away. So to give a brief overview of what I'm working on at the moment for the upcoming narrative campaign, I still need to figure out how I want to broadcast it. I definitely won't be able to do full battle reports of every single battle, but I'll figure, figure something out. Anyhow, I'm working on a Necron kill team for my good friend Espion. So yeah, there'll be some magnetizing of the Immortals and we have a bunch of painted warriors and then two death marks. It shouldn't take too long. We have a pretty easy paint scheme for that. Then I'm working for on some Harlequins because somebody mentioned I should do a punk rock themed kill team for myself and being it's a birthday campaign, I thought it would be okay that I play Harleys even if everybody says they're overpowered. So I'm gonna go for a really shiny green and purple look for them, uh, matching the Erin painting thumbnail art, of course the Hemothrope reactors, and ba -ba, my first piece of GW plastic scenery from the new line. It is far from done. I'm gonna paint in a lot of different colors, <laughs> but uh, the barricades, or what you might call them, uh, have been giving their core colors. They need some wash and a bit of highlight, some weathering, and the skeleton itself has just been airbrushed with a couple of different silvers to give a bit of variation. So I'll need to get in there and paint in some of the details, though not all of them, because that's insane. Other than that, I'm still not finished painting up my wife's Dark Elder team for the campaign, so. I need to get around to do that too. And yeah, then there is a crazy ton more of these to put together and paint so that I can fill up two tables. 
But once this one is done, I'm pretty sure I can do the next couple of buildings much faster because right now I'm still figuring out both uh, the assembly part and figuring out how exactly I want them to look so that they fit with my other sci-fi terrain. And finally, of course, we're going to talk about 8th edition because I am super hyped and I know that a lot of people out there are really getting itchy uh, and the next two weeks seem nigh unbearable. Especially considering how many channels out there who are already uh, uploading unboxings and flip throughs of the books and stuff And I'm like, I really want to get this in my hands right now But then again, I'm busy with Shadow Wolf, so it's probably a good thing that I'll have to wait a little bit <sighs> Anyhow um, As mentioned, there are plenty of unboxings and rules reviews and stuff like that out there so I'll hold any um, videos w on the rules and uh, on the edition itself till I actually have a copy and have tried at least a few games to get a proper feeling of it but I, I can definitely say from what I've seen I am really excited uh, what I want to uh, to talk a bit about and hopefully get some feedback on is what army I should get ready first because as I have mentioned in previous videos, I got back into 40k in 6th edition after um, dropping out in the end of 2nd edition and then I played a few games in 6th and a few games in 7th edition and spent an ungodly amount of money <laughs> uh, compared to how little I actually played in those two editions. Um, anyway, uh, because I stopped playing, I also never got around to uh, finish the armies I was playing and I really wanted to enjoy the game so I actually started quite a few armies because first I was playing Dark Angels and they weren't really working for me especially not with the 7th edition codex uh, I felt like they lost all the Dark Angel feel but that's back now so that's super nice from what I've seen I think they uh, they feel much more like Dark Angels as I want them to be now and they no longer have this stupid overwatch bonus that I don't know where it came from because that was just weird so yeah I have a small Dark Angel army painted up really small but I have a lot of both the generic marine stuff and Dark Angel stuff that I bought and well that I just need to get done so that's one army that I could uh, could pick up again I always liked Dark Angels so there's definitely a possibility there I also love Admech and I got so utterly excited back when they uh, when they came out and I bought a lot of stuff and I painted up one squad of Vanguard and one squad of Infiltrators and then I stopped playing. Um, not that I wasn't enjoying playing them, I was just not enjoying playing 40k as the rules were at the time. So I have some cult mechanicals and some Skitari units and I would be willing to uh, to add more to that collection to make that my army. Back when I uh, when I first played the Admech only existed in the lore and the artwork and I always found them super exciting. Then there are my knights. I love my knights. I have two of them painted up. I have the Renegade box set with another two knights and I also have a couple of Forge World knights that I have not painted up yet. I know. Shame on me. So, I have everything I need to make a decent Imperial Knight army. I also have a bunch of various Imperial agents, starting with uh, me collecting uh, Inquisitorial uh, Warbands, because that was actually uh, in a last panic attempt to enjoy 7th edition. I decided that Inquisitorial Warbands had much more of the feel that I like from, uh, from war games. So I made uh, made a small warband, and I don't really uh, have official Inquisition minis, but I enjoy building them from uh, from bits and pieces, fantasy minis, Reaper bones, even stuff like that. So I doubt they would be uh, very enjoyable as a main force getting into this edition, but I might use them as an uh, attachment to whatever army I end up going with. And finally, I've been wanting to make a Death Guard army. Not the 30k Death Guard, but the proper 40k Death Guard army for a long time. 
And I even bought uh, over the years some minis that were just gorgeous and that I had to have. So there are definitely uh, an option to expand on that, especially since there are Death Guard in the box and I'm making a Death Guard kill team for Shadow Wall. It's, it's coming along uh, slowly but surely and I really enjoy painting them. And I have quite a bit of Nurgle demons that I've used in fantasy skirmish games. So that would also make it uh, easier to get started, that I could just use these Nurgle demons. I don't know exactly how they uh, interact now, but I, my guess would be that you can pretty much, due to the Nurgle keyword, could, can just combine Nurgle demons and Death Guard. Uh, and if that's the case, then that would probably be uh, be my approach, because there are some lovely uh, Nurgle demon, uh, demon models and some fantastic Death Guard models, so yeah. I could see myself uh, start out with that as a as a first army too. So yeah, that's uh, that's actually the the dilemma I'm uh, I'm sitting with. The Primaris Marines are gorgeous, and I have a bunch of Space Marine stuff. I have my Dark Angels. I could expand to to make a proper Dark Angel army instead of just a small skirmish force. I could start to build a Death Guard army almost from scratch, but I have a lot of demons, and quite a few of those are painted. And then there is the Ad Mech. Add to that, Knights and Agents as possible uh, allies. And now I, uh, I would like to ask you, the viewers, because obviously whatever army I uh, start out with will be the eyes I look at the new editions through here on the channel and will also be the source of most of my tutorials and stuff like that. So if you want to see Dark Angel painting videos, uh, let me hear uh, why you think I should play Dark Angels. If you want Admec videos, let me hear why you think I should choose Admec and same with Death Guard. And if you really want Imperial Knight tutorials or uh, Inquisition tutorials, then uh, let me know where you think I should ally them in and why and stuff based on what we know about the new edition. Anyhow, I really hope uh, to get some feedback on this. Uh, it would be nice to get a conversation going below. Pros and cons. What army are you going to play uh, and why? And with that, I'll uh, one final time say congratulations to Charles Fox. Remember to send me a shipping address. And to the rest of you, I look forward to, uh, to hear from you. And I hope you will enjoy this week's content. So take care and bye bye. And the winner is... That was a silly fanfare.